Hi, it's Rob here, shorter video today with an, a little exercise or action step for you. So one of the biggest curses in your own personal growth, happiness, wealth, health, fulfillment, is the over need for control. And whether it's a parent trying to over control their kids or a business owner trying to over, uh, over control everything that happens in their business, their brand, hiring staff, etc. Um, I have this little saying that you need to let go to grow. So I challenge you today to let go of some things. Maybe that's bitterness, resentment, jealousy, and anger. Um, you know, like trying to dominate your competition. Um, the reality is your competition are gonna be better in some areas, you're gonna be better in others. If you let go needing to be more like them and allow yourself to grow to be more like you, then that's a great gift you can give to yourself. Um, so for example, you know, I'm not the best um, marketer or influencer on YouTube at all. I don't have that many subscribers. When you compare 520,000 that sub subscribe to my emails and the, the millions that listen to the podcast. Sometimes I look at these YouTube influencers and think, wow, you've got a massive game on YouTube. I'm a bit of a failure, you know, like maybe I should be over here doing this when actually maybe I should just be carrying on growing my podcast and doing what I can do. I speak to a lot of entrepreneurs who really struggle with hiring staff. Um, because they've maybe tried it before and those staff have failed in their eyes um, and they've paid them and then they've got to micromanage them. But ultimately what it really is, is a fear of mistakes that others make on your watch, uh, an over need for control. You know, I have many trainers that train for my companies. Like we've got about 120 in our Elite Trainer Masterclass and, you know, we've probably got 15 to 20 Elite Trainers. And sometimes when I see them doing the big stages and all the big events that I used to do that I wrote and designed, I'm like, oh, they're more well known and important than me. But then I have to remember what I've done and I earn 50% of the share of the revenue, so it's not so bad. But this sort of letting go, I think, is a big fear or the reason that we don't is because, you know, a situation might... Um, not be how we want it. We may fear being judged or ridiculed or critiqued or trolled, um, but that is the cost of growth. And you know, if you want to have a, a bigger brand, if you want more leads, more followers, more clients, then you have to let go. You have to let other staff take the lead. You know, I have an amazing uh, managing director in our companies who is not an employee. She's definitely a partner of mine. And without her, I couldn't do the strategy, the vision, the time to write the books, do the podcasts. Uh, so without her, I would be much smaller. Without my amazing trainers who are partners of mine, we do 800 training events a year. And in the early days, I said this, and it wasn't an, e an arrogance, I just, but it was a reality at the time. But I said, well, no one can deliver the training as well as me. And back then, that was a reality. My training, there were maybe others who were better at other training, but, you know, with what I knew with property and my companies and our style of doing it, progressive, innovative, personal, at that time, I was the most qualified, the most experienced, and I was the best at it. But that doesn't mean that my trainers couldn't be great at it. It just meant that I hadn't got very good at training them. So I developed training systems. I spent a decent amount of time writing up the, the, the manuals and modules and presentations, getting everything out of my head um, and, and, you know, onto a document or video or audio training. Uh, and then I allowed them to take over some of that training. And yeah, they made some mistakes. And I, instead of blaming them, I took the responsibility myself to say, I need to train them better. We gave them progressively bigger and bigger and bigger events. We de-risked it by giving them small ones at first. I designed and wrote a trainer ascension plan. Now, all of this I did on the go. You know, I never did this um, before I even sort of let go. You know, I, I think that you should learn on the go, not before you go and get prolific rather than perfect. And now it's fair to say many of our amazing trainers are better than me in their specialist field of deal packaging or no money down or commercial conversion or service accommodation. Uh, and I actually feel really proud of that now. You know, in the early days, I would have not wanted anyone to be better than me and I would have never have said it. But now I'm really proud because that's a reflection on me being able to let go. And, um, you know, I get to do the things that I enjoy a lot and make a lot more money. Like we're probably gonna hit 20 million this year. And um, I couldn't hit 20 million doing all the training myself unless I was commanding, you know, 100 or 200 grand a speech and I'm not at that brand level yet. So the only way I can grow is let go and, and give autonomy and, um, you know, importance and credit to others. You know, and like, that's the same with your kids. You know, you, you want to raise your kids with certain values, but then your partner, your husband or wife, wants a different set of values because their values are different to yours. And then sometimes you forget, well, they have their own values because they want to be themselves. 
So you've got your values, your, your, your partner's values and your kids' values and sometimes your grandparents' values and then the, the teachers and the friends all sort of trying to influence how your poor kid is growing up. And, and sometimes you have to go, you know what, this is how I want to raise my family. These are the non-negotiable values and that's okay. But then you have to let them self-discover and you have to let them go on their own journey. And, and you know, I've definitely found that a challenge. Um, when it comes to growing your business, you know, having um, ambassadors and people referring business to you and having admin support and allowing people to log into your social media, managing your messages and, you know, writing uh, email copy for you, all these things. If you don't let go, you are always going to be this one man band who's going to be working 16 hours a day, hating the world, you know, frustrated at your competition, beating yourself up because ultimately you have this need for control. It's a fear. Uh, and great leaders... They're not just people who inspire others, but great leaders are people who develop and nurture and train other leaders. So actually, instead of saying, oh, well, that staff member was shit, it didn't work. Why don't you write a better training manual and system? Why don't you create a better recruitment process? And then why don't you develop them, give them autonomy, give them projects rather than tasks, uh, and then um, lead them and develop their leadership skills, not just their task functions. Um, Graham's just uh, messaged here saying um, he finally got over himself last year and the business grew 30%. Uh, and, that's, and it's a very great, honest thing to be able to say, I got over myself. Now, that's not to beat ourselves up that we're a failure for doing that. It's just that once you get that realisation, then you just, the growth, it, it doesn't happen overnight, but it's, it's almost like there was a limiter on it. And then once you get rid of that limiter, it's like the dam opener and the water floods out. Richard Branson has five PAs. Norman Foster, Lord Norman Foster has four PAs. So they have five and four full-time members of staff just managing their admin. Now, if they didn't let go of admin, um, if they didn't have an agent managing all of their media and they did it all themselves, then their business will be one-tenth or one-hundredth of the size. Um, so let's just summarise then. In order to let go, in order to grow, you must let go. Um, take responsibility for nurturing and developing leaders, whether that's a leader in your child or that is a leader in your, even your PA or your VA can be a leader. Um, you know, outsource and leverage much of the responsibility of the things you feel need to be perfect, because often it's better to be prolific than perfect. Alan has just asked me how many PAs I have. I have two, um, so I don't have five, but hey, you know, it, it, it helps me to grow. I've got a, a, an outsourcer who does full-time research. He's my agent. He, do, he, he manages all my media opportunities, my speaking gigs, he books, um, speakers for my, my podcast and people I interview. He does a lot of my personal uh, research by helping me buy cars and watches and um, you know analysing prices, price comparison. Then I have my full P PA in the office who obviously does all my travel. She books my driver. She does some stuff with the house. I also have a part-time housekeeper and they sort of liaise with each other. Um, she manages my diary, which is like the hardest thing in the world. Um, yeah, and she books all of my appointments, and there's a lot of those. Um, she does a heck of a lot more than that. In fact, I'm going to interview her one time on my um, podcast because I think that'd be really fun. I just want her to, to get settled in and confident on that first. Um, so, bit by bit, day by day, step by step, and task by task, outsource more, give other people the responsibility. It's also a great gift because you're creating employment and economy and revenue generation. What's the point in you doing an admin task that, that costs you 100 quid in your hour of time when you could pay someone 8 quid or 12 quid or 15 quid to do it? It's just a mentality. It's an old school mentality that, you know, if you want a job done properly, you get it done yourself. And, you know, you, you, give, you pay staff and then they mess it up. And, you know, oh, my reputation and brand is everything or the need to be a perfectionist. You know, this perfectionism, a lot of people have this need to be a perfectionist. Well, if you're an, a pilot, you need to be a perfectionist because you need to follow the checklist in the right order. And if you don't, you crash and people die. But when it becomes, becomes to be an entrepreneur, an influencer, getting your social media out there, a business person, you know, uh, you know the go-to person in your, in your niche. Perfectionism is a curse. Start now, get perfect later. Um, be, be prolific, put your work out there. Because of the algorithms on social media, they are rewarding more volume as well as higher quality of content and they reduce your reach. So you could do the best video in the world that you spent years planning and it could only reach 3% of your audience. What's the point? You might as well do 10 raw ones that are a little bit more off the cuff. 
you know, maybe a little bit more rambly, not as perfect, not as well edited, but maybe a bit more um, emotional and uh, motivational. And you do 10 of them in the time it takes you to do one well edited piece of content and it gets to 30% or 60% of your audience. Marcus has said perfectionism is important for me as a surgeon. Exactly, Marcus. That's the differentiation. Um, so if you're a surgeon, you need to have perfect procedures. If you're an entrepreneur, you need to unlearn that because perfectionism can often be a curse of progress. But that can still um, serve you well because if you're doing a deal analyzer, if you're in property, for example, then having a surgeon or a pilot's background can actually really help you. But what you have to shake off is um, the fear of something badly going wrong because if you're a surgeon, the fear is someone dying. Whereas if you're an entrepreneur and you put a video out there or you, know, you, you sell a product or a service, the worst that will happen is you'll have a, you know, a bit of an issue with a, a software or a system that'll break um, or you may have a complaint from a, a, a customer. But if you get a complaint, it's an opportunity for you to fix the problem and get feedback and learn for next time. And if you never put your work out there, you're never going to grow. Um, I wrote a book called Start Now, Get Perfect Later, which helps people get over this curse of perfectionism. But you know that you are right in that there's a difference. So for example, people always say to me, Rob, should people go to uni or you know, should they just start a job or a business themselves instead of going to uni? Well, if you wanna be a doctor, a dentist, a lawyer, you should go to uni because that probably works the best. It's probably the easiest way to get the right creditations, um, you know, the right um, knowledge and experience and the path into the good jobs. But if you wanna be an entrepreneur, a business person, if you wanna start up a disruptive enterprise, if you wanna be, you know, be in a tech business, for example, you're probably best self-learning, you're probably best doing podcasts, courses, getting mentors from people who've really done it. Um, I remember I got an architecture degree, but my, um, what do you call him? The, the, uh, the head of year um, in, in architecture wasn't a practicing architect. To me, that's crazy. But you could be a lecturer in a university, not doing it, but lecturing on it. Um, and not really with the real world experience. Um, so yeah, anyway, something to think about. In order to grow, you must let go. Perfectionism is a curse. Start now, get perfect later. Uh, learn, test, tweak, repeat. Learn, test, tweak, repeat, scale. So instead of trying to get perfect now, learn a bit, do a small test, you know, if you're going to start writing, um, so you're going to outsource email copy to someone who writes on your behalf, then send it to a few people first, get some feedback, send it to a few more, get some feedback and then scale it. So learn, test, tweak, repeat, scale. Whereas a lot of people go learn, 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 never do, which is shelf development. Thanks for tuning in. If you know anyone who wants to get themselves out there more, if you know anyone you know, who's trying to build a product, a service, a business, but they're struggling, they're a bit of a perfectionist. You know, you always see them working hard, but never really getting out there. Please share this video with them, um, because I think that it can really help them. Uh, ultimately, it's best to learn a bit before, but learn as you go, on the go, not before you go, unless you're a surgeon or a pilot. Thanks for tuning in, and remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.